more of me than is warranted by what I do or say. To keep me from becoming conceited because of these surpassing great revelations, there will be given a, be a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded to the Lord, take it away. But he said, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness and in insults, hardships, persecution, and difficulties. For where I am weak, then I am strong. Now, down here, this is a study Bible. I can't read it. It says, 12 7, Thor in my flesh, the precise nature of the severe affliction remains unknown. A further description of Paul's thorn. It says on 12 9, My grace is sufficient for you, a better solution than to remove Paul's thorn. So everybody's got an opinion about it. Thor in his side and his flesh. The reason I picked that is because of my late great wife, the angel of my life. She had uh, rheumatoid arthritis really, really bad. She was just all curled up. Most of her life, I, I met her ninth grade. She's a ninth grader, and she had a problem with her knees swelling up then. Then she lived through most of her life and then progressed. Then she had vasculitis of the body, which is a where your blood veins swell up and die, and it's really painful. And she went through all that pain, and she had to sit down and put her feet on the floor to sleep, and all the powerful drugs we could get never killed the pain. And so she was in pain until her nerves died, and the pain subsided, but she was paralyzed. And that was, uh, I'm getting to the point that. We, I went to, uh, took her to Harrison, Arkansas, to a little church. Some friends of mine, they wanted us to come to kind of help out a little bit. And uh, they, was, they laid hands on you and prayed, talking tongues and all that stuff we do here. But uh, Brenda heard, uh, it was a woman pastor for her husband. I said, well, Brenda's got to pray. You know, she hasn't got the faith. He said that I knew. She heard it, and she never told me about it. She knew that I was overprotective of her, and I would have probably got in trouble with church. So she didn't tell me until later. But she stood on that scripture. After, after that, she said, I heard her say, buddy, grace is sufficient right now. And she went ahead with her life and lived a few more years with her.
things that she said that sticks in my mind forever and ever and ever. Woo! Woo! <laughs> okay, the whole back, folks. Okay, we're going to open up the prayer and, uh, and then we'll have a prayer for you. Father God, we come to you today with a grateful heart, thanksgiving in our heart for you, Lord. You say we have thanksgiving for all things all the time. Sometimes that this don't seem right, but it's because I'm not right. So, Lord, I try to do what the scriptures say, and uh, our pastor is going to do some worship today. We've got to lift our hands up, praise God, that He will touch our hearts, change our attitude, help us help others. That's what it's all about, it's helping others. That's why God has got us here, the, the, the elders and the other people at church that are. Do prayer orders is to help others with their afflictions. Bring them up so they will have peace, excitement, and oh, the Holy Spirit. I'll just stand up as well as you do.
why we are able to celebrate. It's because he did. He conquered death, hell, and the grave. And so today you see the elements up here in front of us. And if you are in a place to be prepared to take the Lord's Supper, uh, we're going we're gonna to play that song some more. And uh, when you feel ready, just come and grab the elements. And as we end, uh, then we'll, uh, we'll enter into a time of observing the Lord's Supper together. And, uh, you know, I, I love this song kind of leading into this because it is why we remember. We remember what He's done. We remember that He came to save the world. And even at Christmas, it's in our earthly minds, it's the beginning of the story. But in God's mind, it was already from the foundation of the world. He loves you and I that much. They knew that he is Savior. <laughs> yeah. And Jesus was that from the very beginning. And so his heart for us is that we would choose him. That's the, that's the part that usually gets, you think, you know, man, why were there 400 years between the Old Testament and the New Testament where God was silent? Well, there was a preparation time, even throughout the, old, the entire Old Testament, to lead mankind to a place where they would recognize, hey, when John the Baptist says, hey, the Messiah is coming, and you need to know him, that they would be ready to go, yes. And we see the word of God, even after 400 years of silence. That's pretty amazing. Who in a generation without seeing God move, most of us are doubt everything about our lives and anything we've ever had legacy life. But somewhere in the midst, it takes the faith of a mustard seed to see the Lord do an amazing work. And He hasn't stopped doing it. So at this time during Christmas, Yes, we celebrate his birth, but we also understand what he came to do. And that's a, that's a huge, lifelong, eternity-long story of love for you and me. That's an amazing gift. So we're going to sing another course or two of this. As you uh, pray and prepare, uh, come take the elements, just come up and grab it. Whichever one, uh, if you can open the packaged one, then please take one of those and save the open ones, the already open ones for those that may be a little hard to open. So, yes, let's pray and we'll continue to worship and we'll continue to have the Lord so Heavenly Father, thank you. We thank you for sending Jesus. We thank you for the blood that was shed. And we're going to remember and observe together what you've done. And uh, we say thank you, Lord. We thank you that you've come to save the world. In Jesus' name. Thank you. 
not forgive, that you would not, that Father in heaven would not forgive. So we want to release that today. We offer whatever outcome of justice that might have resided in our hearts or anything that might have been done to us that we might have taken up offense about. We just release that outcome to you. We release the need to, for justice from us. We release that to you, knowing that you are capable, you are trustworthy, and you have said. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. So if there is any justice needed, that you would be the justice, not us. And so, Lord, we just want to release that right now. Forgive. Church, if you have a, a person or two in your life that is that the Holy Spirit is bringing to mind, just mention their name and say, I forgive. To be just quietly under your breath right there. And then after this, be able to say, I pray peace.
Testament, in the Old Testament, and it's been going on ever since. Uh, so, so let's continue with that. And then our website is up and running again. Uh, so if you need a connection, if you need to get involved, if you want another thing, we also have giving cards to, to, for you to fill out for you to stay connected with the church. So we hope that, that uh, if you're not connected like you want to be, please go off of those and we'll get you, get you brought in. So at this time, we will dismiss the children's church. personality-wise. 
that when we find our real house, like in a job or a project, or maybe even a calling in the body of Christ, that we might find great satisfaction in being able to do and accomplish something that we get to use our strengths in, right? There's nothing wrong with that. And God designed each and every one of us in those strengths to be able to offer them in exactly that way, okay? However, there is a little different angle that God likes to sometimes throw in there. And that would be when it doesn't feel like any of those things, right, at all. In fact, it can be entirely uncomfortable. It's when he wants to use something through us that feels more like a weakness than a strength. Can I get an amen? <laughs> right? When we are operating in an area of strength, how do we feel? Well, we have this confidence and joy and we're operating quickly and efficiently and at this high level and we might even feel like we could do it in our sleep, as it was said. But when we are operating in the area of weakness, in an area of weakness, how do we feel? Well, we lack some confidence, right? It feels, I use the word clunky, right? <laughs> feels a little clunky. We feel inadequate, maybe unprepared, and we might feel even a little untrained, or, or maybe we have some, uh, yeah, I love the term, right? Christy, you did it, Troy, Troy, that comes straight, we might even get some head trash, right? <laughs> that that kind of comes and emerges. And when we're saying, then why am I even doing this, right? I mean, this doesn't feel good at all. Those are not usually the feelings that, quote, unquote, keep you coming back, right? Any golfers in the house, you got the one shot that keeps you coming back. You can spray it all over the forest, but you got that one shot that made straight down the fairway, and you're like, yeah, man, if I could have 72 more of those, that would be awesome. But it's just one shot, but we keep coming back and playing golf because we think, yeah, one day I can do that. It usually doesn't happen that way. I have not experienced that. But those are what keep us coming back. When we feel good about ourselves and we have confidence, that's usually what keeps us coming back. So why does God create us with all these strengths and then sometimes, seemingly, he wants to exclusively use a significant area of weakness for us to camp in. Right? So today's sermon title is Powerfully Weak. Powerfully Weak. Now, there's a fine line in acknowledging something in our life as a weakness versus owning that weakness or even a sin as an identity, okay? That's not what I'm saying. We should never own a weakness or sin as our identity because we, in Christ, he gives us an unlimited option, right? Romans 8.1 says, Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. We are victoriously equipped through the blood of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit to walk free from crippling sin, okay? But what I am saying is there may be personality traits, perspectives, mindsets, and maybe even some mistakes in life that we have made that God has brought us through that we might see as weakness. We might see them as something that we would just like to be rid of, move on from, or be better at, right? But somehow, the Holy Spirit keeps putting these opportunities to use that weakness for something more. Could it be that he sees our freedom through that weakness? rather than something that we avoid altogether. So let's go to, and I love the Holy Spirit, the way he does this. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 12, 9. 
See, I mean, Ron Bell had no idea that that's where I was starting today. But the Holy Spirit did. He's all over it today. Yes. All over it. Verse 9, but he, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. His grace is sufficient. Now, we've got to understand what grace truly is. It's, it's that empowered, unmerited favor. You know, I only had a partial view and definition of that word for many years of my life. It was just a head knowledge of what Jesus had done on the cross that allowed me to have grace so that he just tolerated me and my sin. But that's an incomplete picture. He actually gives us grace that's empowered. It's called a charis grace. And it's very active. It's not just a sit in there for head knowledge. It's a, I'm giving you something to overcome something else. Where sin abounds, grace that much more abounds. That sounds pretty active. It's not that where sin happens, you need more head knowledge. No, that's not what it is. It's where sin abounds, I'm giving you more power to overcome that sin. Okay? His grace is sufficient because he's always given us more of it. His power actually matures in my weakness. Oh, right? The power of Christ comes through our boasting of our weakness, not our strengths. Man, that goes through, that goes against every YouTube channel I've seen in ministry, all right? <laughs> I mean, we're, we're like, you don't know, see the YouTube channels going, man, I struggle with this, I struggle with this, I struggle. No, that's not what they get on there to do. Maybe, maybe it's our testimony of having had the struggle with what God has already taken us through. Those are the stories I want to hear. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 11, 30. If I must boast, which we could preach on that a while, okay? But if I must boast, comma, I will boast of the things that show my weakness. <laughs> well, that's not any fun, Lord. <laughs> I mean, this is very counter churchianity, right? Or we come in, slick up, whatever, get it on our best outward, whatever. But my boast needs to be, man, this is what I struggle with, but he has given me the grace to overcome. Amen. First Corinthians 15, verse 42. And 43. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable. What is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. And it is raised in power. So he's given us the opposites there. Because the previous, uh, as you kind of get through the passage of this, it's showing the previous uh, verses are about us receiving our glorified body. What is, what is corrupt becomes incorruptible. Okay? So he's given the comparison. It says, so as it is with the resurrection of the dead, this is also part of God's kingdom principle. Okay? This is how his kingdom operates. And it's so counterintuitive as it relates to our flesh. Because none of us want to sit there and dwell on our weaknesses. Why? Because it's uncomfortable. 2 Corinthians 13, verse 4. 
For he was crucified in weakness. Jesus was crucified in weakness, but lives by the power of God. Well, if Jesus did it that way, how are we supposed to do it? Thank you. Okay? For we also are weak in him, but in dealing with you, we will live with him by the power of God. Now, I, we spent all last week talking about it. I mean, I, I confess, I have, I have been in place in times in this season where that, I want his power to operate through me, but sometimes I take, I take control of it. You go, man, I'm just, just going to make this happen. When in actuality, he's not asking me to make it happen. He's just asking me to trust him and then listen, and he's going to tell me the next step. Romans 8, 26, it says, Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. See, they leave us alone. I mean, it's not that we are... He's expecting perfection. He's not. He's acknowledging, hey, I'm going to send the Spirit. He's going to help you in your weakness. It didn't say, if you had it. <laughs> it's like, we got it. All right? <laughs> Isaiah 40, verses 29 through 31. Now, part of this you're going to recognize is, like I say, it's got like a refrigerator first, all right? But there's some stuff before it that I want us to catch, okay? Verse 29 of Isaiah 40 says, He gives power to the faint. And to him who has no might, he increases strength. Well, that kind of goes against some of our stuff. Like, man, i got to get all my junk together before I can show up at church. No, he says, His power shows up in those who are done with themselves. His power shows up when they have no more might. That's the place we need to be. That's that dead place. We finally are dying to ourselves and ready to do it His way because when we have no might, He says He increases the strength. Verse 30, even youth shall faint and be weary. Young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. See, this has such different meaning or maybe amplified meaning in light of some of the context. We do like it for a little quick, you know. Verse 31, yes. Now the wings of the eagles, yes. I'm getting above it. All right, Lord. Refrigerator verse red, gone. Moving on, right? But no, he, what this really says is that, man, when we come to the end of ourselves, it's not us taking up our own strength and figuring out how we can fly. It's not just taking it by the bootstraps and making it happen. In our own strength. It's. I am faint. And I have no more might. God. He's going man you're right where I need you. Because now right there. Right there. You need to wait on me. Wait on me right there. You ever. Go out with a kid or grandkid. And you're like man you've got to do something. You're like stay right here. Do not move right <laughs> You have to go do something, you know, just, you know, especially if they're little. I mean, that's like trying to mouth well put sandbags in their pockets and hope for the best, right? Because they are not going to stay in that spot. Sometimes we're that way with God, right? He's going, I know this, this is really humble. This, it might even be humiliating to stay in this humble place, desperate for the presence of God. Running faint. I got nothing left, God. And he's going, yes, stay right there. Stay right there. Because next comes my power. I've been there and I'm there. Full disclosure. Ephesians 6.10. 
Finally, be strong and give all your greatest effort and he will do it all. No, that's not what the verse said, right? Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. You're like, well, Paul, how, how do you do that? Well, you get look at that. Our weakness ushers in his power. If we can take his perspective of our weakness, if we continually see weakness as in the natural as weak, that somehow, again, when we do that, we're, we're thinking of what other people say of us. Because who, who, who said you were weak? I mean, a uh, uh, culture full of weak people. Why, why would I be any different? We've all got weakness. But what makes me feel like I can't be? I'm listening to the wrong voice. Because the Lord already knows. He's like, yeah, stay right there. You're in the right spot. Because I'm about to do something awesome. 2 Corinthians 12, 10. For the sake of Christ, then I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Rob Bell, right there, he read it for us earlier. It's that phrase, I am content with weaknesses. Uh, I'm going to have to pray in that one. <laughs> right? That's not one that just easily comes off the tongue, right? I am content. What's that word content mean? It just means I'm full of faith in that he's going to take the stuff and use it for good. Because you'll notice, you'll notice we end up going through stuff. That area that is so hard, that's the area of ministry you probably have. You know? Because the principle is, hey, you're going to go through some stuff so you can help somebody else. Mm -hmm. Scripture. So it shouldn't come as a surprise. And we're so relentlessly attacked in a certain area that seems so dear to us. So dear to us. Yet, if we will stay vigilant and right there, with no might and nothing in our power and strength, even though we might have the talent, we might have the, the gumption, the stick to the resolve, or to make it happen, that's not what he's asking to do. He said, stay right there with no might. And I will increase my strength. Isaiah 41, 9b, only the second half of verse 9 through 10. It says, saying to you, you are my servant. I have chosen you and not cast you off. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed. For I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. And I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. There's nothing about that that says take up our own bootstraps and, and figure it out. That's way above your pay grade, right? He promises to strengthen and help and uphold us. But it's through this place of need and weakness and not creating out of our own strength. So what's the point? Well, spiritual maturity is, yes, a transformation into a deeper love relationship with God. Notice how we're not, we're not talking about behavior. I mean, I can, I can, I have to be careful, Paul, all right? I can take 
and make something look like a cookie on the outside. Let's just say that. We can paint it up, make it look really good. I mean, have you seen? I mean, even on a, a movie set, they got cookies that are, you know, fruit that's plastic. I mean, it looks really good on the outside. We can make ourselves look really good on the outside. Spiritual maturity comes from a deep love relationship with God, not a painting of the outside texture. But having a matured faith is also having the authenticity to actually be okay with shining the light of Jesus onto our weakness and allowing God to use it to impact the kingdom. We can encourage others and we are gaining more freedom from the area of weakness. And there is a spiritual principle and authority that God gives that I was speaking of just a moment ago. When we walk through something, He actually gives us authority over that. To pray to any people. Those that successfully walk through trauma can pray over people that are experiencing it and they will see deliverance and freedom. Those that walk through successfully getting out of addictions of whatever kind can pray over others with an authority that they carry because they've been through it. Because there's a biblical principle involved in that. God gives authority through grace, empowered and merited favor to the humble. This is why we authentically acknowledge that he is made strong in the areas of our weakness. To see him glorified and not us trying to rob glory from him in some way by efforting better than everyone else. We're on the same page there? Okay. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 4. First uh, Peter chapter four verse eleven. Where we start. Whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God. And remember, we we referenced this verse last week. Oracles are revelation from God. So there are the commands of God. There are the oracles of God. This is, it's not the Logos translated where it's rainwater. It's what has been enlightened to us from the Holy Spirit, giving us the oracles, the revealed instructions from God. Now, they will not contradict the Word. Okay? They will be in alignment with the Word. But it's from the Spirit that we're being enlightened about something very specific for us that lines up with the Word. So whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God, whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies. That's the important part, right? It's not out of our serving out of our own effort. We're serving out of the strength that God supplies that only happens in a love relationship as we get it. We fall deeper and deeper in love with him. And then I love the rest of that. He said, one served by the strength that God supplies in order that everything God may be glorified and that in everything God may be glorified through Christ Jesus. So when we do it, out of his strength, then we're not stealing any glory from him. He doesn't need us to do it. He's God. Hebrews chapter 4, 15 and 16. 
For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses. Man, hallelujah, right? He, there's nothing that we walk through or will walk through that he doesn't sympathize and understand. He says, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Now, this is interesting. I know our, our students, I kind of uh, got wind that our students were having a, a discussion Wednesday night about Jesus and, you know, his godness, if you will. Because sometimes they, 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 there was a perspective that's, and I think some of us in this room might have the same perspective, that somehow that Jesus, because he was Jesus, he was able to do all this stuff. Because he's God. Man made, made in flesh, dwelling among us. He's just, that's a true statement. But if we understand what the scripture says, he actually, he actually restrained his godness. Why? So he could show us how to live. He restrained playing that card. I mean, I'm, I'm telling you right now, in the Garden of Gethsemane, as he's praying and and, and blood's coming out of his forehead because he's praying so intently. He was feeling every bit of stuff that we have. That would have been a great time to go, hey, uh, God the Father, I would really like to not experience this. And he was there. He's like, is there any other way to do this? Why? Because he was experiencing every bit of what you and I would have if we were doing that physically. Thank God we don't are, we didn't we weren't sent to save the world from sin. He's already done it. But he did give us an example of how to walk it. Because he did it perfectly. And not because he was going around playing the God card. Those supernatural events, he says we're co-heirs with him. We are to do those works and greater works. So it's not just relegated to just Jesus doing his Jesus God stuff. He's equipped you as a child, as a co-heir, to do exactly what he did. So, if he showed us how to live this out, since he was even crucified in weakness. So even if he wanted to, you know, play the the modern, you know, the machismo card, you know, of Jesus, you know, I mean, he's he is the ultimate man, but even he walked through a very vulnerable situation, right? They beat him to unrecognize him. He gave himself. He did not rear up and say, oh yeah? <laughs> when they sat in his face, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. That's a man. To be able to look with love in the face of culture Someone who is persecuted, angry, and wants to beat you to a pulp for whatever reason. Now, you ain't got to go around being dumb and weird, all right? Don't be, you know, rude. But if we're trying to be Jesus to people and loving people and they just get all this demonic, ah, which is happening to them. Right? You're just nice to people and there's that one person, right? And he's like, I can't stand them. Well, okay, maybe you need to live, right? But we don't have to, obviously I would hope that our heart is to love in the face of persecution. He says for us to have joy when we suffer for Christ. I had, in fact, we were living in Austin. I had a, a boss who was Muslim. 
And he found out that a little Christian boy here was in ministry. Guess who got all the hard jobs? You. Yeah. Even my other two coworkers were like, man, dude, he must really not like you. It's like, man, you don't ever ask us to do that. What I did, I did it just under the Lord. I got promoted. I, I got promo promoted three times in six months in that job. God didn't leave me in that spot. He was faithful. When we begin to see what He's doing, we can understand. It's his strength. It's his faith. In the midst of what? In my flesh. When I was getting all these dumb jobs and, you know, felt like, man, I, these are not fun at all, but here we go. In my own weakness, I was able to see him at work and go, all right, Lord, to you be the honor and glory. I want to do this to the best of my ability. And he would give me more grace and more favor. So from last week, we went at Ephesians chapter 3. We're going to expand that a little bit. We'll do verses 14 through 21. It says, For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of His glory... He may grant you to be strengthened with power through His Spirit in your inner being, so that, there's that word, those words again, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth, and to know the love of Christ. That surpasses knowledge. That you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think. According to the power at work within us. To him be the glory in the church. Be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations. Forever and ever. Amen. So he grants us strength with power through his spirit. And when we do that, it is also so that Christ actually may dwell in our hearts through faith. That's what the scripture just said. Verse 17. It's not strength of our, from ourselves. It's not more effort. It's more love connection. And when we are falling more in love with him, we are getting more grace and more grace to overcome. As a result, we receive more empowered grace given from him and by him. That's why in verse 20 it said, according to the power at work within us. That power can fluctuate depending on our love relationship with him. We have access to everything that he has. But our love connection with him in faith will determine how much, how much we get to play around in that. Three thoughts here in the land for today. Weakness is powerful. <laughs> Again, counterintuitive, right? Weakness is powerful. The first thought of this is people relate more to our weaknesses than they do our strength. I mean, if you were to go tell somebody who is absolutely struggling, that's why. You know, those that struggle with addiction really have a tough time hearing from somebody that's never been through addiction before. They go, man, you don't even know. 
But if you've struggled before, then the person that's actually being able to see that what he did and I did, they relate better with the area of weakness because if I just go up to somebody and say, they ask me, well, why, why are you following, following Jesus, you know? Well, you know, Jesus is awesome, but man, my life is just been amazing. The entire, my entire life. Like, nothing's ever gone wrong. Really. What would you like? Get out of my face, and I might punch you out. Yeah? I mean, nobody wants to hear that. They want you to be able to identify that, man, this is hard. And in our own strength, this life is hard. That's the point. If we don't ever see or come to that realization, then we are going to just stay right there. We're going to see other people walk through life successfully. And you might even look at them the same way because you don't really know the story. I mean, people look at our family and go, man, look at them. You know, bomb traps, you know. <laughs> you know, we don't. We haven't been through any stuff. I'm telling you, we've been through the stuff. And we're going through the stuff. So, nobody knows the story. We just kind of assume that because they're going through on the outside, it looks pretty. It looks blessed. We don't, we don't get there without going through the stuff. But people want to hear about the stuff because they connect with that more easily. They might enjoy your strengths because you're good at it and kind of go, okay, yeah, that's cool, but they really connect with your weakness. 1 Corinthians 9.22 says, to the weak, this is Paul talking, to the weak I became weak, that I might win the weak. What does he mean? Does that mean, well, you know, there's a bunch of partiers out here, I'm going to party with them and build a testimony with them. No, that's not what he's saying. That's right. He's saying, I'm we, I'm showing my vulnerability. Hey, I was this person. Now I'm this person because of the blood of Jesus. I became I'm vulnerable to show them that I have been weak. And without Christ, I am nothing. And whatever you're walking through, I would be there too if it weren't for Jesus. I in myself am weak, but in him I'm made strong. Yeah. Second one is weakness allows the spirit's effort instead of our own. And we spent a lot of time on that last week. But when we spend that we submit to the spirit's prompting and leading, he provides the multiplication, the acceleration, the elevation, and the promotion. If you find yourself calling and scratching for attention, whether it's at work, even in ministry, even just trying to be noticed about, if you are trying to call and scratch for that, then you're dying on the wrong hill. Our eyes are fixed elsewhere. They're not fixed on him. So when we fix our eyes on him, we find ourselves right back. Where he goes, yeah, stay right there. That's where I want you. Now watch this. And he does it. And it won't feel like you've done anything. Man, I've seen glimpses of that in my life. I want more of that. That out of who he's created me to be, Created my family, each and every one of us differently, but together we see the, the power of God in the multiplication and acceleration. And whatever promotion or elevation, or whatever, it's His deal, it's not mine. I don't have to go clawing and scratching for Facebook and YouTube likes. I don't care. I really don't. 
To be honest with you, it really face took. I would love it. But, uh, sorry. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, I mean, sorry, not sorry. Yeah, I mean, because, I mean, there's something about the body of Christ. And I, and I love it if people can't be here and they're sick and want to tune in. I love that aspect of it. I really love to figure out another way. One day we'll do that. We'll figure it out. Soon. The point is, I'm not here to elevate anything that I'm doing. Or let my family do. Really, in fact, it's the exact opposite. I, I don't, I'm not looking to be elevated in anything. I'm looking to equip all of us to see the power of God move in a way that we've never seen it before. And that doesn't involve me. I can't carry that. My family can't carry that. I don't know if our leadership can carry that alone. We are to do it all together. Yeah. In the coming months, we're going to ask you to do that. Very soon. As I say, kicking the train wheels off. <laughs> Stay tuned. The last one is <clears throat> weakness releases empowered grace. Right? His grace is sufficient in weakness. 2 Timothy 2 verse 1 says, You then, my child, be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Not be strengthened because you're doing everything right, you're, you're making all the right ministry moves, you're, you know, you've got the right look. You're saying all the right things. You're showing up, you know, 42 Sundays out of the year. <laughs> None of that. It's just empowered grace. Why? Because we found him right here in that low place. I don't want to do it in my own power. I want you to do it. And I want to stay right here. Might be even as simple as in your quiet time, leaving enough space for now. I'm just going to read the word until the Spirit shows up. You ever done that before? Yes. Yeah. Sometimes we can be a little off because he's testing us. Man, you really want me or you just got me in a bigger time slot today? He will test us today. How hungry are we for him? Vulnerable can we be to go shine the light on the Lord? Because in that light comes freedom. Because the truth is, we all struggle with stuff. We all have weakness. In certain areas, we have had weakness. Maybe you're walking through a weakness. A love connection with Him is always asking. Deepen our love for him. Do whatever it takes. Pray first. Holy Spirit, I ask you to awaken my heart for you again. Awaken my heart. I don't want to do it on my own effort. I want you to touch my heart. That it awakens something in me where the word comes alive. You're their worship songs don't hear the same way. They penetrate in deeper places. There's a place of vulnerability. There's a place of, of a heart that is tenderized to the point where we might cry a little bit. God, right? Yep. It's okay. It's going to be all right. Jesus wept. We came to him, right? I want you to stand with me. To bow your head just for a few minutes here, we'll ask that to come. Just as you have your eyes closed there, you know, it's about if you want to, you just sit, you know, you want a, a space. Where it's, there's it's not much distraction for you. 
I ask this question. So we describe this vulnerability in acknowledging our weakness. What's, what's an obstacle that is keeping you from that place? What's the obstacle? And maybe that's a tough question today. The mindset. It could be a family dynamic. Maybe even a family dynamic in this room. Because if I'm that vulnerable, man, what is my family member next to me going to think? Again, I go back to how hungry are we to want, first of all, him to, in a love connection with him, but in this place where we're so vulnerable in our weakness that actually his empowered grace begins to work through us. I think the church, modern church in general, has, has had a tough time transitioning from that. We, 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 we put up the facade because we haven't shined the light on weakness and admitted and brought light to it. The enemy uses it and keeps it hidden and we just we bury up in shame and guilt and condemnation and nothing that the Lord has ever wanted for us. He's actually said, hey, I'm over here. In me, you can be free of those things, but somehow we just feel like we're staying in it and when we go through this cycle of because we have guilt and shame and condemnation, then we kind of want to sin to self-soothe and, and, and we're in just this hamster wheel. We just feel like we cannot get out of it. So today, maybe it's time to exit the hamster wheel. And the first is dealing with pride. Lord, be glorified in my weakness. Be glorified in my weakness. When we become that vulnerable, then we would actually, our vulnerability is released through faith because that's when the Lord becomes the voice that has our ear. He becomes worthy of our obedience over whatever fear that we might have of being vulnerable. Let somebody else in to go, hey, I am really having a tough time with this. Can you pray for me? I want freedom over this. I need inner healing over this. And together we can ask the Holy Spirit to bring back a moldable and, and a softened heart that falls in love with Jesus again. Then he begins to allow the Holy Spirit to use our weakness, which then opens up the supernatural kingdom of God in your life. We begin to have supernatural encounters. We begin to see him use us in supernatural ways because we just let go. So that's where I'd like to pray today. If that is you, right now, if our prayer team would come forward, we just want to make make ourselves available up front here just for a few minutes. And there's something about that, that coming forward in faith that says today, that's me. I am wanting to be free of the weakness. I want to cast the light on the weakness and receive the empowered grace of God.
over this area. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you for your word, your truth. We thank you that it's not just words on a page. It's your Holy Spirit, you are, are moving in this room today. We thank you for shining light on our weakness. And that you want to use that to actually bring you, yourself, honor and glory. But we need to shine the light on it. We need to allow you to shine the light of Jesus on that weakness. So we need to acknowledge our need for you today. So Lord, we say, I, I need you, God. I need you in this area. set us free. You want us free from that weakness so that you may shine light and empower us to actually use that for your honor and your glory, Lord. We lay it down today and we fall deeper in love with you and what you've done on the cross for us that gives us that freedom. It gives us that grace. In Jesus' mighty name, Yes, Holy Spirit, come. Work, work. Church, pray for those that are up front here today.
Pray for revival. This is where it starts. It starts in us. We're not waiting on anybody outside of these four walls. We are asking the Lord to bring freedom in this house to us. Starts in us. Is anything there? It's heavy. It's, it's weighty. That weakness. He wants to shine the light on. To be free. Come on.
seal this in the power of the Holy Spirit in freedom and transformation that we walk with it whatever the weakness was that the pool is, is less that it's easier to walk in victory it's easier to walk in love with you Holy Spirit we just come right now and just pray over all of these that are here up front where we just ask the Holy Spirit come just invigorate their hearts with a passionate restore passionate love for you in their hearts today. Holy Spirit, we ask for a hunger for your word, that things with promises would leap off of the page for them. And that they would begin to personally see how personal you truly are and how personal you really love them. to the cross for them. Help us all, Lord, to remember your love for us. Holy Spirit, we ask for an unction to want to spend more time with you. We ask for an unction to dig into your word. We ask for an unction to pray prayers that might even be hours long. We ask, Lord, that you would just help us fall deeply in love with you again. By the blood of Jesus and in the power of the Holy Spirit, we say yes, yes, and yes. Amen. Oh! <laughs> 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 